Many people seem to forget that children can think. They can. And I did. I began to lead a secret life of my own. My own thoughts were very precious to me. They reached the sky and carried me far and wide. Of course, now as an adult, I can see things with perspective and with greater clarity. But many of the principles I base my life on, I can trace to early experiences and early decisions. One day, I went with Granny to the Longshan Temple on a traditional Taoist feast. It was like entering another world with dragons and griffins and sacred trees and other remnants of ancient Chinese culture. With fascination, I watched everything that was going on in the temple. I knew people were praying for their families to enjoy good health and happiness. My granny was so excited about it all. She even threw the Bai Oracle to ask God for an answer to some question that worried her. She really believes in all this, I thought. It means a lot to her. This made me look even more closely at the idols. There were hundreds of them. There was Grandfather Heaven, who is also known as the Jade Emperor. He is assisted by many commanders and officials, such as King Xia and General Fan. There was Guan Yin, Goddess of Mercy, who looks very much like Mary, the mother of Jesus. There were gods and goddesses of every description, each with a specific job, to bring rain, to promote success in business, to protect a house, to give children to mothers. There were the patron gods of actors, hairdressers, musicians and soldiers. As a Christian, I didn't believe in these gods, yet I was impressed by the devotion of the people, including my grannies. Surely they couldn't all be wrong. <laughs> when I told my father, he ridiculed all religion. My child, it's a complete nonsense, he said. I'm glad that you're finding the truth at last. Read this booklet, he told me. It will open your eyes. It explains the origin of religion. The book shocked me. It pointed out that we, human beings, have invented gods and goddesses according to our own imagination. The truth of what the booklet said struck me. Yes, gods who are emperors, kings, generals, officials, mother goddesses, they are all divine beings who don't exist. They are made by us. They are illusions, figments of our imagination that copy human society.
The significance of this fact sunk in when I suddenly realized that the booklet spoke about all religion, including Christianity. Is God not presented in the Bible as someone who talks and acts like one of us? Is Jesus himself not like a film star who performs difficult and heroic tasks? Is the Virgin Mary not very much like Guan Yin the goddess of mercy. I know now that the book was based on the theory of Feuerbach, who maintained that all religion is just a creation of the mind. I didn't know that at the time, but I got the message. A storm of doubts raged in my mind. I didn't know anymore whether I could believe in God and Jesus Christ. It came to my mind that this might be the reason why clever people like my father and other successful men did not bother to pray to God or to go to church. I struggled with these thoughts for half a year. In the end, I decided to put the problem once more to my favorite teacher. When I explained my doubts to him, he said, let's go up to the roof terrace of the building. Isn't the sun beautiful? He asked me. Yes, it is beautiful, I said. Doesn't it seem to look at you? He asked again. It does, I said. It's just as if it has a face and smiles at me. Don't you see? The sun has no face, he said. It can't look down on us. It doesn't wake up in the morning as we do, or go to bed at night. And yet we talk about the sun as if it is human. The same thing we do to God, he said. God really exists, but we talk about God as if God were human. Let me tell you a little more about the sun he said. The sun is an enormous ball of burning gas. It weighs 300,000 times as much as the Earth. Its inside temperature is 14 million degrees Celsius. It burns 4 million tons of matter every second, converting it into heat and light. The sun looks so small to us because it is 150 million kilometers distant from us. Because the sun is so far away, people have imagined it in human forms. For the Mayas in South America, the sun was an ancient ancestor who traveled through the sky to hunt during the day, but who spent the night in an underground cave to eat food and take rest. The Greeks and Romans imagined that the sun rode through the sky in a chariot drawn by winged horses. According to Japanese myth, the sun is the goddess Amaterasu. The emperors of Japan were considered her direct descendants. Japan is a country where the goddess wakes from sleep each morning. She is the rising sun on the Japanese flag. In many cultures we find such human representations of the sun. Does that mean the sun does not exist? He said. Of course it exists, and it is much more glorious and wonderful than people ever imagined. The same is true about God. People have given him a thousand different forms in their religions, making God male or female, kind or severe, remote or familiar. These forms are human imaginations. But the reality of God really exists 
and it is far greater than can be grasped in human thought. From that time on, I've understood the difference between God's reality and our human images of God.